Good morning, folks. Good article here on why Europa may be the prime suspect for finding extraterrestrial life in the solar system. If you are new here, let me introduce you to one of my favorite buoys. To take a look at recent readings is not going to raise your brow, so we'll go back to 2011 and see how the ebb and flow is supposed to look. Then, in 2012, during the great Indonesian tectonic breakup of early April when double eight pointers rocked Sumatra and ripped fault lines throughout the region, it was as though the sea floor rose a meter or two, permanently making sea depth readings just a little smaller. Then in early February 2013, magically it's as though the sea floor got down off a 10 month tiptoe challenge, has now settled back, and notably this happened during the Solomon Islands quake swarm we just had. Speaking of quakes, Small rumbles continue in New Zealand while a moderate swarm develops on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge off the coast of Brazil. In the UK, we have reports of a nuclear submarine having to crawl home due to critical failure in the system and a possible reactor leak. Coming to the weather, major disaster taking place in Indonesia as the landslide is only part of the battle. Flooding is widespread. South Pacific, this counterclockwise southern high pressure system produces major rain at the convergence pulls down at the western edge along with this clockwise moving southern low, heating that thin area while southwestern air will cool off slightly. You see rain at the convergence, thin line pulling down and cool southern air mass behind it. Precipitation totals and temperature match perfectly. Europe will see this convergence bring warm air to eastern Europe another day or so and then by the end of the week France and Germany are cooling off considerably. 24-hour snow total map shows New England taking the brunt of yet another of the Weather Channel's named winter storms. It'll be a factor another day or so. Meanwhile, big counterclockwise low yanking north of the leading edge and south of the tail. Midwest is in for a major warming as the low approaches and a major cooldown as they encounter the backside. Lastly, the Pacific Northwest is still dealing with precipitation from these lows. Solar wind. You know we have been exiting an interplanetary shockwave. You can see further decline in the solar wind speed in yellow around 2100 UTC. But we also had one last spike of protons just after 1200 UTC. Fluxgate shows magnetic disturbance just after 12 and calming after 2100. Plasma penetration was strongest after 12 and was gone by 2100. Induced frequencies were strongest after 12 and died down after 2100 but that wasn't the only solar event of interest yesterday. You see a spike on the GOES X-ray flux and, as expected after yesterday's sunspot party, we got our first significant flare in a while. An M1.9 that did not produce a CME, but did noticeably ionize Earth's upper atmosphere. Looking at the spots this morning, top right, still developed leading umbra with minor trailing development. The region that popped the M flare decayed slightly in the center, but positive blue is still on both sides and the southeastern limb probably the most complex at this time. The three-day coronal hole structure and umbral field diagram shows little change from yesterday, and out front of those southern active regions we just mentioned, leading the way is the huge plasma filament, still managing to hold on. Looks like we got a small coronal hole up north to go with the larger opening in the south. Neptune geocentrically conjoins the sun in a few days. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.